Welcome back everyone, this is the State of the Nation. Guess who came to dinner? Yep, none other than Mama Newland. Let's talk a bit about the US Under Secretary of uh, State for Political Affairs, Victoria Newland's visit to Sri Lanka. Now, if you were oblivious to her visit and her influence in Sri Lankan matters, oh, uh, you must be part of the Colombo liberal menace. If you are not, then you clearly need to wake up because you are ignoring one of the key puppet masters who has extended her strings of influence to some of the most important authorities within our country. And I can hear how hard the radical Colombo liberals are on Twitter screaming conspiracy. Because that's their go-to line to shut down their rivals. After all, they are weak-minded people who don't have the willpower to listen to reasoning. My intention is not to spread conspiracy, but to spread awareness of something happening right under our noses. And I, for one, am tired of getting played by these superpowers. Victoria Jane Newland rose to fame with tw in 2014 with leaked phone conversations. Actually, why did I play this video package so you understand what I'm talking about? When you're a high-ranking official talking about diplomatic efforts in Ukraine, the last thing you want to do is drop your guard. So that would be great, I think, to help glue this thing and have the UN help glue it and, you know, f*** the EU. But that is exactly what reportedly happened between US Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Newland and US Ambassador to Ukraine Jeffrey Pyatt. The exchange has since surfaced online, including the crude swipe at the European Union. The audio clip of a woman and man, said to be Newland and Pyatt, hears them discussing strategies to work with the three main opposition figures. There is a suggestion for Newland to contact Klitschko directly to play to his top dog sensibilities, while Newland refers to getting the United Nations involved in a political solution. And that's where the unfortunate comment arises. I'm obviously not going to comment on private diplomatic conversations. Uh, other than to say uh, it was pretty impressive tradecraft, the audio was uh, extremely clear. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. We're here from America. Would you like some bread? Please take something. Thank you for coming here. This was Newland and Pyatt visiting Independence Square in Kiev in December, handing out food to protesters and police. This latest episode is embarrassing for the US and allows Russia to argue that the opposition is being manipulated by Washington, something that Barack Obama has always denied. Well, basically what she did in Ukraine was to push people there to topple the pro-Russian government led by Viktor Yanukovych and install a puppet of their own through radical people's protests. Sounds familiar to us Sri Lankans, isn't it? I mean, I understand most of you have short-term memory loss, just think about the similarities between the regime change in Ukraine back in 2014 and how the US played the people there and put that nation into war. They did the same thing here to us as well. She is now here to lecture us about reconciliation while her president Joe Biden is a walking carcass spreading racial hatred, lies and misinformation in the US and destroying small businesses. She's also here to remind us about reforming the PTA, Prevention of Terrorism Act, while her government is upholding the same thing, calling it the Patriotic Act. Perhaps we should too change the name of our Prevention of Terrorism Act to Patriotic Act, and then the US will be so happy with us. She's also here to advise us to hold elections in March and be inspired by climate activists in Sri Lanka. I have to give it to the Americans sometimes. They know the game. They know how to play. Actually, they invented this game. And you and I have no way of winning because they've rigged it so much to benefit them. But here is something I was most intrigued by in her speech. Last summer, the Sri Lankan people made clear their desire for a cleaner, more accountable government and a more prosperous and inclusive democracy here. The US is proud to be Sri Lanka's partner as you do the hard work, and we know it is hard work, to secure the future that all Sri Lankans deserve. 
Sri Lankan people? Did she actually interpret the Aragalia on our behalf? Can someone remind her that the Aragalia was not an election that took place and it's not, not even a people's mandate, but an unlawful push by a selective few whom she funded, allegedly, and created chaos in this country so that we can be a beggar's nation once again at the behest of the IMF. Let's zoom out a bit. Why is Mrs. F the EU, better known as Mama Newland, is here in the first place? This is where you and I will have to work together to join a few dots. Now, India's alliance with Russia for oil is probably one of the most important geopolitical decisions in the past few years. In the Ukraine conflict, Mama Nuland's most important project was getting all their teammates to stand in line against Russia and China. They needed India. India made a call to be on the side of their people and purchase oil from Russia despite the outcry from the US. With India no longer being a good boy with the US on Ukraine or Russia for that matter, we recently saw a scathing smear campaign against India mushrooming in the West. Firstly, it was done by the BBC, also known as the Best British Comedy, Comedy Channel, Le released a documentary on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi trying to showcase that he was instrumental in ethnic cleansing in 2002 Gujarati riots. No sooner that went on, an unknown research firm from the US released a report on India's wealthiest company Adani, crashing its stocks and wiping off more than $100 billion. Now, before arriving in Sri Lanka, Mama Nuland visited India. Well, for what? You should go there to tell India to get in line as well. That same India is looking at Sri Lanka for growth and partnership. I believe it's clear to anyone looking at this why the US would want to know where Sri Lanka stands when their biggest Asian partner has now made a historic switch. Like I said many times in previous episodes, you control energy, you control the nation. So is the US here to tell us to refrain from taking support from India on our energy needs and to streamline ourselves with the US. Perhaps Mama Nuland might have given Basil Rajapaksa another US energy company to come into Sri Lanka. These are not isolated incidents. There are other things we need to be aware of. Think about the most recent uh, naval exercise between the US and Sri Lankan militaries. It was just last week. What was the purpose of that? Are they trying to build up a military post here? Perhaps because Diego Garcia is way too far for the Americans. These were the same people that threw a fit when the Chinese ship Yuang Wan 5 docked at the Hambantara port. You Google the ship's name today and the first search result from the most incredible and unbiased news source in the world, the BBC, touts it as a spy ship. Yes, the BBC, whom the Colombo Twitter liberals believe so bluntly. Now, here's a fun story. The BBC's fact-checking service wrote a piece during the Aragalia saying that the protesters did not take over the Rupa Vahini Corporation when it clearly did. There were protesters in the Rupa Vahini Corporation. There was a court case against that person who did. You remember he was even uh, uh, taken out from a plane when he was trying to slowly slip away. Yes, and this, the best joke is this article still exists in the BBC saying fact check. Just imagine this is the BBC, supposed to be the gold standard of journalism. Now the gold standard of British comedy. Anyhow, uh, about Mama Newland, we need to be prudent to understand the devil in disguise if America really wants to help Sri Lanka. They can easily tell the IMF to kindly provide assistance since they have the controlling stake in the IMF. But instead, they are once again using it to change our laws and policies and now pushing the 13th Amendment back into the discussion to create more chaos and unrest in Sri Lanka. All right, uh, joining me now is political analyst Malinda Senivratna. Thank you for your time, Malinda. Good to see you once again. Um, last time Victoria Nuland was here, we saw massive protests taking place soon afterwards. Lots of conversations occurred in various corners of our society saying uh, that she was here to get the former president 
in line with America's policies and not to go towards China. Well, Malinda, this time also we see she is back because the current president is not so much anti-Chinese uh, to the Americans. What do you think is the purpose of a visit this time around? She said uh, the most inspiring meeting uh, she had was with some climate activist. Are we to believe that? Uh, well, Mahesh, uh, first of all, uh, no American diplomat or, or representative roams the world uh, just to have parties. They are there, they do their work to serve American interests, not Sri Lanka's interests. What she did in her last visit is of course now all history, but this visit comes at a time when uh, uh, the Adani group is under tremendous attack. Now the India is essentially seeking a monopoly of our energy sector through the Adani group. So it is no coincidence that uh, Newland is coming here because obviously she would prefer uh, an American monopoly of the energy sector as opposed to India in a, at a time when India is not towing the US line, especially with regard to Ukraine. And the world essentially is not really taking um, too much notice of what Washington has to say. So Newland probably has those things uh, in her mind. And if it's uh, climate change that she is worried about, uh, she's excited about, if that is her concern, well, the US, USA has been the has been the biggest roadblock to any positive global action on uh, climate related uh, issues. So that's funny. I mean, I mean, you can make what you want of, of it, but this visit comes at a time when Ranil Vikramasinghe, as you mentioned, he's not is not as anti-China as the U.S. may want to uh, want him to be. But there's also been a change in how he has been looking at uh, Sri Lanka and Sri Lankan interests. Now, with the 13th Amendment, the statements he has made, uh, which uh, is creating is generating a lot of. Uh, anger and uh, anxiety among all kinds of we never had uh, uh, elections for provincial council in five years now no one wanted it right so newland uh, newland's visit we have to see as an as a just another visit of an interfering uh, and uh, of, a, of an interfering us diplomat whose interests don't coincide with us. Absolutely. Um, Malinda, uh, we see many anti-Indian sentiments building up in the West right now. Has India's relationship with the USA changed? Well, uh, India didn't, as I mentioned, India's uh, issue uh, position with regard to Ukraine. India didn't uh, support NATO. India didn't support Russia. India took a neutral stand. And that is not enough, I, I suppose, for the West and for NATO. And uh, this is probably why we are seeing uh, a lot of attacks on India, especially Prime Minister Modi. And the Adani group is, of course, something else. But uh, the recent uh, documentary, BBC documentary on, uh, on uh, Modi, that is not a very friendly documentary. We know how mischievous the BBC is, Channel 4, and what they, talk, they did with uh, Sri Lanka. So uh, it's, it's a global political economy issue. And uh, 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 maybe a fear on the part of Washington about a shift in the center of gravity in uh, global affairs. True, true. Uh, but I understand what you're trying to uh, say now. Now, Malinda, uh, I want to talk about something else with regard to foreign policy. What changes do you think we should make uh, regarding our foreign policy? Seems like that we are being treated like a football in the global stage. Well, we have put ourselves in a position to be treated like a football. Uh, not just uh, over the last few months, but uh, several decades. Uh, we remember that Nixon's uh, visit to Sri Lanka was essentially to persuade Sri Lanka not to go with the rubberized pact with uh, China. So from that time onwards, they have had this problem about uh, you know, where Sri, Sri Lanka should stand. The non land movement is no longer in operation for all intents and purposes. And uh, so when we talk about who our friends are, the West is in decline. China and Japan owe the, uh, the, the debt of Europe and North America. What are you talking about? These guys are not, not exactly rolling in money, they are rolling in debt. Uh, we need to know what, what our interests are in the first place. If you don't know what our interests are, then 
then what the hell can we do about uh, you know how, how we op how we treat uh, or, or uh, have relations with any other uh, country so that's the question i think we should uh, try to resolve in the first place who are we what do we want where have we come from where do we want to go those questions are not being asked or addressed by uh, governments opposition none of the political parties are actually talking about those things Indeed, indeed. There is a lot more to talk about this. Thank you very much. Uh, that was political analyst Malinder Seniviratnam. We have to leave it at that. We are going to take a short commercial break. This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment.